to Bridge Climb Sydney. Today we will explore together the Sydney Harbour Bridge and specifically the bridge in the context of forces, corrosion, contraction and expansion. We will firstly look at what these things are and how they relate to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Let's start with forces. What is a force? Forces can be pushes, pulls or twists. In bridge design and construction, there are two key forces which engineers have to deal with. These are tension and compression. Let's look first at tension. Tension refers to two pulling opposed forces. The tension force is the force that is transmitted through a string, rope, cable or wire when it is pulled tight by forces acting from opposite ends. The tension force is directed along the length of the wire and pulls equally on the objects on the opposite ends of the wire. If the pull wasn't equal, then there would be movement. Let's look at this in the context of a suspension bridge. When a load is added to the bridge, the bridge is pulled down. This pull puts the cables under great tension. Now let's explore compression. Compression refers to two pushing, opposed forces. This tends to shorten or compress an object. What happens when you push down on a spring and collapse it? That's right, you compress it and by squishing it, you shorten its length. Just like compression in the spring, the bridge loads all come through compression in the arches down to these pins at the base of the arch supporting the arch into the earth. Load testing is used to ensure that the bridge design can adequately cater for the forces. When the Sydney Harbour Bridge was being built, they placed 96 steam trains on the road deck at once to test the strength of the bridge. There's 39,000 tonnes of steel in the arch arranged to carry the forces on the bridge. You can see verticals in compression diagonals in tension, slender hangers always in tension, and the arch, the big chunky compression member on the bridge carrying the main compression forces. So what can be done to control these factors? Bridge design is paramount in controlling these factors. Some examples of bridge designs include a beam bridge, with beam bridges, the forces are overcome by the distance between the supports. A cable stayed or a suspension bridge. With a cable stayed bridge, the forces are overcome by the tension in the cables. An example in Sydney of a suspension bridge is the Anzac Bridge. A single span arch bridge, which is the design of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. With these types of bridges, the strength comes from the arch's shape. Now let's look at corrosion. Corrosion refers to the degradation of materials' properties due to interactions with their environments. Corrosion of most metals is inevitable. Corrosion occurs due to a chemical reaction when two or more substances react to a new substance. Let's look at metal. When a metal corrodes, it forms an oxide. Iron plus oxygen equals iron oxide. Another name for iron oxide is rust. Rust occurs when iron, or an alloy that contains iron, like steel, is exposed to oxygen and moisture for a long period of time. Let's look at corrosion on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The bridge is being affected by corrosion in the form of the steel rusting. The rusting is occurring in two key areas. Travelling up the arch, there are lots of examples of rust. Here's one here. The paint's starting to peel. That's letting the oxygen into the iron. With a bit of moisture in the air, rust results. At a local level, we get corrosion around rivets or other divots. Mostly this is about water accumulating and speeding the corrosion process. That happens on the east side more because there's more sea spray coming from the east. So what's being done about corrosion on the bridge? Well, lots of painting like this. The paint acts like a barrier. It stops the iron and the oxygen combining, stops water getting into the reaction, and so rust can't form. Secondly, we undertake proactive monitoring. 
a partnership between the RMS and the University of Technology was forged to develop a robot which travels internally through the centre of the arches to check for signs of corrosion or other issues. This robot is able to travel where people physically cannot, is remotely controlled and is equipped with camera technology which engineers review and can identify any areas which need further investigation. The final topic area that we will cover is expansion and contraction and we will do this by looking at matter. All matter is made of particles. The arrangement of these particles is determined by the amount of energy that they have. In a solid, the particles have little energy and merely vibrate without moving past each other. In a liquid, the particles have more energy than in a solid and are able to move past one another. In a gas, the particles have more energy still and are free to move about in all directions. We can get a material to change state by increasing or decreasing the amount of energy that they have. This increase or decrease in energy can be achieved by changing the temperature. As particles increase their movement, the object will expand and as particles decrease their movement, the object will contract. The bridge is a great example of expansion. In the summer months, the arch rises up to 180 millimetres as it expands. When the bridge was constructed, the two half arches being built out over the harbour met at this point. The engineers needed the bridge to be the right length to meet. That meant choosing the right season, a mild August, and the right time of day to get that right temperature. With the right temperature, the right length, the two halves met right here where we are. And behind me, we have an expansion joint that allows the bridge to expand and contract by up to 100 millimetres as it heats and cools. This brings us to the end of the clip. We hope that it has helped you understand the important factors of forces, corrosion, contraction and expansion, and how these factors can be seen as a living example with the Sydney Harbour Bridge. <laughs>